Dan Smith. I do a weekly TV show called Team Chicago Challenge. My website is teamchicago.tv. Teamchicago.tv. And to the background, motorcycles, hot rod. This is Motoblot in Chicago, a street fair for hot rods, motorcycles, tattooed women. Get some of the motorcycles. And uh, make sure you look on YouTube for the other show. The other show we're going to feature the Hall of Fame. So uh, this is a street fair in Chicago, and uh, everybody's having a great time. The weather is almost perfect for the second day of summer. What a way to kick off summer in Chicago. Don't forget my website, teamchicago.tv. My email, tdan45 at gmail.com. Send me an email and tell me what you think of uh, Team Chicago on YouTube. I should point out that Indian Motorcycles is one of the main sponsors of Motoblot 2019. But the Norton Owners Club generally gather right up by Ashland Avenue as we look at Clyde's. I believe this is Clyde's yellow Norton Commando 750, a gorgeous British motorcycle. Also looking at a Vincent here. This is a British twin, a very collectible motorcycle. John Ravella brought this down. This motorcycle was best in show at the Norton Show held at MCC in August. We are exactly two miles west of Trump Towers, a landmark in downtown Chicago. We are right next to the Cobra Lounge all Rise Brewery. This is a very popular restaurant and watering hole for many motorcyclists. Throughout the years, you see this Kawasaki W800. It's got a bevel overhead cam setup. This is Kawasaki's latest retro looking British Japanese motorcycle. They replaced the W650, which they sold from 2000 to 2001. And earlier, in 1965, Kawasaki made the W2, which was based on, the engine was based on the BSA A7 engine. But this is a great, classic-looking, Japanese-built, British-type sport bike cafe racer. We're now looking at a Triumph Truxton this could be a 1200cc twin, a genuine, beautiful British motorcycle. And you will notice for being a new twin motorcycle and a completely modern engine, Triumph has gone out of their way to make this engine look like the engines that were sold in the 1960s and the 1970s. This engine almost looks exactly like the engine in my dirt track racer which is a 1967 Triumph twin engine. But besides great looking motorcycles, Motoblot also features cars, hot rods, street rods, the beast. They have got this car hugging the ground, big V8 engine, and the front radiator is so low to the ground as it drives the streets in Chicago, it's losing part of its grill. Now we're looking at a pickup truck, dually wheels in the back, Chicago Stockyard Garage, a group of guys building hot rods and motorcycles on the south side of Chicago. They've got this blown hot rod on display and also on the south side, I had the opportunity to talk to Molly Hayden, and she's going to tell us about Gearhead Workspace on 31st Street on the near south side of Chicago. Hi, I'm Molly Hayen, the owner of Gearhead Workspace. It's a do-it-yourself auto shop on 305 West 31st Street in Chicago, so it's just 10 minutes from downtown. We have four car lifts, two motorcycle lifts. Um, each lift comes with a basic set of hand tools and an internet connected TV so you can find YouTube videos or look up manuals. And we also have coaching and classes so if you need an extra hand or need to learn how to do something we can help you with that too.
and our website is gearheadworkspace.com. So how long you've been at that location? We've been there for two years. How many? Two. Two years. Mm -hmm. And how's business? Business is good. Business yeah, is good, huh? It's picking up. Great. We just need to get the word out because not everyone knows that such a concept exists. So We're what's the, only the one in Chicago. biggest job you've done? The biggest job we are currently working on, I would say, um, we blew up the engine of our Porsche Cayman at Road America, of course, and we're going to put a LS1 in it. So that's our summer project this year. So can people come by and Porsche watch? Porsche Cayman LS. So yes. people just walk Absolutely. in off the street and visit? Absolutely. Um, if you find us on Facebook, we're um, posting a lot of pictures and videos of the build and you can uh, comment or send us an email and ask us when we're going to work on it next and you can come by and watch maybe help out a little bit too. Thank you Molly and I spot the 62 Chevy with a Nikki Chevrolet sticker on the back. Am I the only person alive that remembers when Nikki Chevrolet was on Lawrence Avenue in Troy? Let's talk to Mark Wabinski and he's going to tell us about this 62 Chevy. Hey, I'm Mark Wabinski. I'm from Berwyn, Illinois. Uh, right here we got my 62 Chevrolet Biscayne. Um, I bought this car about six or seven years ago. It was a roller. It was an old ladies car. It had an inline six automatic. Uh, no engine or trans when I got it. Um, and it was painted a brutal, like, like matte, flat, uh, seafoam green color. Um, so I slowly started working on it. I did all the chassis work. Um, I had a motor for it all ready to go. It's a just a small block 350, uh, board 30 over. It's got a bunch of speed parts in it, forged rods, forged crank, um, roller cam. Uh, that's a, actually a Holly Street Avenger, a 670 Street Avenger. It is a single pumper, um, but you know I went with little vintage and got you know the moon uh, fuel block. Um, I have modern MSD ignition, so it fires right up. I got no issues with electronics. So, the other thing I did, um, I did convert it to four-speed. It's got a four-speed manual. Um, I did put a hydraulic clutch in it, um, so it's got a hydraulic throw-all bearing. I use a, wild, a Wildwood Master Cylinder, so the clutch action is just like a new car. But she's a runner. She's super fun. Um, there's more upgrades to come in the future. A big block, you know, may, might be going in it. Uh, but right now, I'm just having a blast driving her. So whatever you got, bring it out. Thank you, Mark. What a great looking 62 Chevy. What a perfect day for Motoblot here in Chicago. As I spot a KTM 390, a very popular beginner bike. Next to it, I spot this MV Agusta. Now who sells MV Agusta, KTM, Ducati, and Triumph? This must be the display for my good friends at MCC, MCC in Villa Park, which I'll be at later in August this year for the Norton Show, where we had a chance to talk to one of the owners, Greg Millinger, and he's going to tell us about a few of these bikes on display. Hi, it's Greg from uh, Team MCC in Chicago. We're here in Motoblot. We got the new KTM 390RC here. KTM small bike for the beginner rider. A new entry into the micro, Microsoft market here. And followed up by the Ducati, Ducati Scrambler. Uh, bike for urban riders in Chicago here. 1100 cc's. Great bike for the city. Another, another Italian motorcycle made by MV Augusta. A little bigger engine on this, 1,000 cc's, more of a hot rod bike. Then we have the last but not least, we have the Triumph Bobber for the rock and roll crowd that's here today. This will fit right in for these guys. Got 1,200 motor in it, six speed transmission. Fits right in with these guys with the high bars on it too. So what about this uh, MV Agusta? You're, you're the only dealer for them in the area? Correct. MV, MV Agusta is an Italian motorcycle. We're the only dealer in Chicagoland area. Uh, we've been selling them for about 30 years now. Uh, them and Ducatis are both Italian. Uh, we're real familiar with them. They use a four-cylinder engine on the MV Agusta. Very fast. If you like a fast bike that does wheelies, this is the bike for you. 
Okay, so what about uh, dirt bikes? What kind of dirt bikes do you guys carry? So, in the dirt bike lineup, we have KTMs. KTMs make all sorts of two-strokes and four-stroke dirt bikes. They start off in 50s and go all the way up to 500 cc's in a dirt bike. They have street legal dirt bikes, uh, motocross dirt bikes. They have every single capacity of dirt bike that you can imagine. They've been built dirt bikes. Actually, since about the 60s, they've been bringing the bikes into the country. They're winning most of the Supercross races now, so they're dialed in pretty good. KTM just went past Harley and, and uh, BMW in sales also this last year. So they're coming on real big, real strong right now. All right, so where are you guys located on your website? Okay, we're located in Villa Park, Illinois. You can check us out on our website at teammcc.com. Thank you, Greg. Now, we're not going to cover the Miss Motoblad contest in this clip on YouTube, but the Miss Motoblad contest for 2019 is up on YouTube as we speak. Just follow this capital O, T, T, capital A, 4, small Z, J, small H, capital R, capital E, S. Or you can search with Dan Schmidt, Miss Motoblot 2019, and you can watch the Miss Motoblot contest in its entirety. Also up there by the main stage, I spot these great looking photos. This is Kevin McIntosh from Milwaukee. Harvey Davidson on the ice caught my eye and I wanted to find out what vintage mofo is all about. Hi, I'm Kevin McIntosh, vintage mofo. These are my photos. I'm from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. I take pictures of vintage motorcycles, I ride vintage motorcycles, and I race vintage motorcycles. So how can people get hold of you and see your artwork? You got a website? Yeah. VintageMofo.com What is it again? VintageMofo.com Thank you, Kevin. As we look at one more of his photo, looking around Motobot 2019, I spot Jerry Chingus pinstriping the front fender of their Triumph Truxton. I deeply admire people that can pinstripe. In the past, I did buy a pinstriping brush and I was planning on trying to learn how to pinstripe, but between the racing, the TV show, and a million other things, I never quite found the time. But this is true art. There's not much more than I can say. Let's just watch the work from Jerry Chingus and if you want more info, it's Jerry Chingus Designs at Trouble.com. We'll come back later and look at more of this pinstriping. But right now I spotted this Nimbus four-cylinder motorcycle and I had the opportunity to talk to the president of the club, Craig Keller.
I am Craig Keller, the president of the uh, Chicago Nimbus Club, and our club just had its 30-year anniversary this year. Um, it started with uh, a couple of Danish guys getting together that had Nimbuses before they came to America from Denmark, and one of them got uh, a Nimbus for his 50-year uh, birthday. And then a bunch of other guys got re-interested in them, and now we have about 16 or 18 in our club, and mostly Danish people. And the bike was started, uh, was produced from 1934 to 1959, and they made about 12,000 of them in total. And in Denmark today, there's about 3,000 that are still registered and on the road. In the United States, there's a couple hundred that probably are here. Um, our club is uh, Chicago-based. There's another club in uh, California that has some members also. Um, so we have probably about 60 people in our club. We meet, have drives, rides, go to shows like this, a Christmas party, a spring party, that kind of thing. Um, the bike's four cylinders in line, 750 cc's, 20 horsepower, so big engine, not a lot of power. But the great thing about it is pressed steel frame and shaft drive, uh, very low uh, center of gravity, easy to drive, and fun to drive. Three speeds with a neutral in between each. The main customers for the bikes were uh, in Denmark was the post office and the army. So some of our members have army motorcycles. Uh, they actually had machine guns on them, and uh, one even had a cannon. Uh, the, the post office also used them to pick up and deliver mail in the country and in the big cities in Denmark. Um, they stopped production in 59 because of NATO. When the VSA motorcycles came in, the V40s came in as a standard NATO bike, and uh, they ceased operations and went out of The company is actually still alive in Denmark, but they make vacuum cleaners that people still buy and use today. Website for you guys is uh, chicagodimusclub.com. Thank you, Craig. As we look straight east from Motobot, we can see Trump Tower. What an occasion. The President of the United States has a building in Chicago that's exactly two miles east of Motobot. Motobot's at Lake Street and Ashland Avenue, two miles west of downtown Chicago. As we look at the truck, from the Toys for Tots Chicagoland Motorcycle Parade. A good number of the volunteers that put on that parade every year spent time at Motobot greeting all the motorcycles. This is a big event, a big spin-off from Mods and Rockers. As we look at the blue color added to the pinstriping by Jerry Chingus. I should point out that Motobot is a spin-off from the Mods and Rockers. Mods were the guys with the scooters, Rockers were the guys with the British motorcycles in the 1960s and 1970s. Larry Fletcher spun it off to Motobot to now include motorcycles and hot rods in Chicago. As we see some of the members from the Nimbus Club planning on leaving late in the afternoon on Saturday. For more information on Motoblot at Fulton Street and Ashland Avenue, join us in 2020. Motoblot.com, Motoblot.com. To contact me, it's teamdan45 at gmail.com. I look forward to hearing from you and your comments on this show and other shows on YouTube. Remember, you can always search with Dan Schmidt Motorcycle Racing for great motorcycle racing action.